Welcome to another edition of Types and Figures on eBible Fellowship. We're going to be looking into the book of Esther today and learning about Queen Vashti and about Vashti's beauty. Now, you might recall that Vashti was the wife of King Ahasuerus, who we saw as a type and a figure of God himself. But first, let's look at Vashti's beauty. This is in Esther 1. This is during a time of a great feast, and it was the king's desire to bring forth Vashti to show everyone her beauty. And we read in Esther chapter 1, verse 11, that Ahasuerus issues a command. Esther 1, verse 11 reads, To bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal, to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. Now we learn in the next verse that Vashti did not obey the command. In Esther chapter 1 verse 12 we read, But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. Now once we see that Vashti represents national Israel, Suddenly, the spiritual meaning of this passage starts to come into a little bit more focus, and we have a better understanding of what God is teaching us here. Concerning Vashti's beauty, in the case of Israel, Jerusalem, or Judah, God looks at them as being very beautiful. Zion, as a matter of fact, is spoken of as being beautiful in the book of Psalms. So Vashti had a special beauty, and she was fair to look on. And in Lamentations chapter 2, verse 15, we find this same word, beauty, where we read of the judgment upon Judah. Lamentations 2, 15 reads, All that pass by clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? Now, regarding Vashti, and her refusal to obey the king's commandment to come forth, we might, all of us might think, well, this was a small thing. It was just one little sin. She refused to obey. And as we know, sin is everywhere. It permeates this world everywhere. And again, we might look at this as, well, she just refused to obey just this once. It's just a small thing. Well, yet in a perfect world, in a good world where sin has never been, we can see how evil a thing it was. Because in the Bible, disobedience is not a light thing. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 16 and 17 points this out. There we read, But they and our fathers dealt proudly, and hardened their necks, and hearkened not to thy commandments, and refused to obey. Neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them, but hardened their necks, and in their rebellion, appointed a captain to return to their bondage. So here Vashti, and she, she thinks she has her reasons for disobeying. She thinks that she would not just refuse to come if there were not good reasons. But God, whom Ahasuerus typifies, gives us commandments. And he always gives us commandments. Is there ever a sufficient reason, if we think about this, to disobey him? Any, any reason at all to disobey God? Well, we may think that we have reason to disobey him, but there's never justification for doing so. Disobeying God is just another way of saying that we're sinning or that we're transgressing his law, and we never have justification for doing this. And in Esther chapter 1, we don't read that this was Vashti's habit to disobey seemed like she had never done this before because the king was so furious. It sounded like he was actually surprised that she would refuse. But if you think about it, how many times does it take for us to disobey one of God's commandments before he can legally and justly and rightly put us away? How many times does it take? It only takes one. James chapter 2 verse 10 declares, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point. He is guilty of all. How many sins did it take Adam and Eve to commit before the whole human race was cast down? One sin. One sin of disobedience. Now, of course, that one sin would destroy all mankind, each one of us, except God provided a way of salvation for certain individuals that he chose, and that was his elect whom he predestinated to save from before the foundation of the world. 
But as a result of Vashti's disobedience, we find out that she is to be put away from the king. In Esther chapter 1, verse 19, we read, Let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. We can see how God did this with Israel. When Jesus went to the cross and the veil of the temple was rent in twain, he divorced national Israel. He put Israel away. In Matthew 21, it'd be good to read this whole parable in Matthew 21, which begins in verse 33, but we're only going to look at one verse. We read in Matthew 21, verse 43, Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. This is referring to Israel. If you read this parable, this is very apparent. So here Vashti is put away, and then a search will begin for her replacement. And in the next edition of Types and Figures, we're going to be looking at who takes the place of Vashti as queen and who it is that she represents. Queen Vashti, a type and figure of national Israel.